Alright, well, we decided to make a video in response to several other videos that we've seen both on YouTube and Facebook come up uh, related to horses coming and picking their riders up off of the mounting block. And this is something we've been teaching for a long time and a lot of trainers have been teaching for a long time, but we don't really ever see too many videos on how to teach it. And it's really, really useful. It's something we used to teach to every horse that would come through for training. Uh, any ridden horse that would come through for training, we would teach them how to come pick you up off of a fence or pick you up off of the mounting block and really teach a good come to me cue to it their whole body. And it's a lot of fun to teach and really, really useful. So we're going to go ahead and go through it with two horses and look at a, a two different ways to teach it and kind of gives you the pros and cons of both. Uh, and then you get to see how we teach it to these horses as well. Uh, so Leo here, we're going to start with Leo. <clears throat> Leo is a, a, I guess about two and three quarter year old. Uh, Appaloosa Frisian Colt. Uh, he belongs to my wife, and Leo's kind of just start out, starting out in his uh, his young career. So this is a great thing for him to learn how to do, uh, so he can come pick my wife up, who's not very good at jumping on from bareback or from the ground anyway. So it's nice to be able to have somebody come pick you up. So let's go ahead and, and get started teaching it. There's pretty much only two things that you need to teach this. You need to have a, a halter or a bridle on them and a dressage whip or a, a lunge whip or something that you can reach out and touch the horse with. Now, <clears throat> basically, the goal of this is to teach the horse to take his rib cage or his hindquarters and bring it to you. Now, the two different ways that I've taught this is to one, teach the inside hip or the inside rib cage to come towards me or come to the pressure of the whip or the other way is to actually target the outside of the horse's body the outside rib cage and the outside hip and teach that to come towards me in the past I did it all from the inside I've actually started now to do it more from the outside because I've found teaching it from the inside and teaching them to come towards the pressure of the whip has messed up some things in higher level training for me later on in the horse's career so I prefer to teach it from the outside. It's the same exact thing, it's just where you're applying the pressure that really just makes the difference. So I prefer to teach it on the outside of the horse, but you can also teach it from the inside. It really doesn't matter, but sometimes later on down the road it can affect things. So what I like to do is I like to find either a fence, a flat fence, or even better, a corner uh, to teach the horse the idea, the principle that we need them to learn to start to learn this come pick me up off the mounting block kind of trick. Well, the reason why I teach it against uh, a fence or a solid uh, area is to eliminate options. If I'm taking a, a multiple cho choice test and I've got four different options, A, B, C, D, and I'm looking at these and I don't know which one it is. I'm, this is a multiple guess. I have no idea. But if my teacher comes up and quickly scratches out A and scratches out C, then it's really helpful. I've gone from a 25% chance of getting it right to a 50% chance of getting it right. So that helps me in the long run figure out which one's right. As many times as I can, I like to do the same thing with my horse. By putting a wall on one side of him and a wall in front of him, I've eliminated two of his options to get it wrong, making it easier to figure out what he needs to do to get it right. So as many times as you can do that with your horse, the better. My hand is going to be responsible, my inside hand is going to be responsible for making sure that the horse doesn't go forward or that he doesn't take his shoulders too far into me or doesn't take his shoulders away later on. Oh, you're fine. <clears throat> so that's all the hand is responsible for is just making sure the nose and the shoulders stay pretty much where they need to be in line with me. The dressage rip or the lunge rip or the carrot stick or whatever you're going to use is like an extension of your hand to put pressure to a specific part of his body to tell it where to go. It's the energy, it's the gas pedal that says activate the body to do something. And later on, this is going to go to just your hand or maybe just your voice when the cue is finished. So if I can do it here and teach it here, then eventually it becomes just my hand. Eventually it may become just my voice with the hand as the backup and the ultimate backup being the dressage whip. Or if I need to, I'm on the trail, I can pick up a stick and be able to back it up if I need to as well. So we're going to start here. <coughs> Alright, so again, this is responsible for holding the shoulders and making sure it doesn't go forward. I'm going to reach over his back to his hip and I'm going to start putting pressure there. Now what I'm looking for is him to do that. Take that hip and bring it towards me. 
Now Leo knows a little bit about what the dressage whip means. He knows that it means forward because we've done a little bit of bridle work in hand with him. We've done some rope halter work. So he knows the idea that the dressage whip means energy and forward. This is something important to teach in the beginning with any horse is that the dressage whip is not to panic. It just means to go forward or add energy to your body. So because he already knows that, he immediately starts searching for the answer to what I'm asking him for. I'm asking a question, do something with your body. He's going to search for that answer. And he got it right fairly quickly because we already eliminated most of the options. He can't go backwards because he knows the dressage it means energy or go forward. He can't go forwards because I'm here with the with the rope halter or any halter as well as there's a wall in front of him. He can't go that way because there's a wall there. I've eliminated all the options. There's only one option. Bring it towards me and he gets it right very very quickly. So we're going to practice it again. I tap here. He says, I'm searching, I'm searching. I release as soon as I feel that hip come towards me. As soon as that foot takes a step towards me, that's all I'm looking for. And then we'll ask again. Now, I don't reposition him next to the wall before I ask again. I want him to make the mistake of getting it wrong, go to the wall, and then figure out that's, that it, the pressure hasn't gone away, so I must not have done it right, figure out what you need to. So if we start here away from the wall, I'm gonna start applying pressure. He's either going to take his hip towards me, like he just did, or he's going to go to the wall. Most of the horses, Leo's being really good and easy, most of the horses, they're going to go away from you towards the wall first. Keep the pressure on. You don't have to escalate the pressure, but just keep it there to say, no, that's not correct. And then eventually he's going to hit the wall and say, nope, that doesn't happen. He's going to come towards you, and then you can release the cue. The more times he makes the wrong step, you don't do anything different except for keep asking the question, and then he comes to you, the stronger the cue's gonna get in the long run. He's gotta know that when that cue's there, it's not to go away, but it's to come towards me. So the more times he can get it wrong and come back, the better. Okay, so we're gonna ask again. Right on that hip, he bounces around, and then eventually he takes his hip towards me. Let's go again, right away. Good job, Leo. We go one more time. Good job, Leo. Perfect, perfect. So in a matter of minutes, and this is something that Leo has never learned before. This is brand new today. You guys are seeing the first experience with him learning this cue. So in a matter of a few minutes, as long as I release on exactly what I need him to learn, he gets it fairly quickly. Now it's just practice and repetition in different scenarios and different contexts to make it stronger. We're going to do it again. Each time I get to the point that I'm done, at this point, I'm going to take him away from it. He did it right. Walk him all the way back around. <clears throat> We're going to reline up. And then I'm going to ask him again. I'm going to reach over the top of his back to his hip. Good job. Another step. Good job. Another step. <clears throat> good job. Very good. Perfect. We're going to do it again. I'm going to bring him away from the mounting block. Bring him back. That time I don't even have to touch him. He starts to activate it. I'm going to touch him here. Say, give me a little more energy. Keep going. Keep going. Perfect. Just like that. And my hand on the rope halter is just making sure little guiding touches that make sure the shoulders stay with me and that he doesn't shoot forward. Eventually, he's going to know to bring everything towards me. But right now, he still needs a little bit of help that says, don't go forward, continue towards me. Okay, so now we have the idea. He's got the basic concept. Let's apply it straight to the mounting block. I'm still going to use this wall to help me, but I'm going to leave a little bit more room so that he can make the mistake. The more times I can correct the mistake and tell him, no, that's not it, the better. And he's going to get stronger for it. So we're going to take him away. <clears throat> bring him straight up to the mounting block. I'm not going to line him up at all. I'm just going to bring him straight up to it so he's out of position. Climb on my mounting block. Start to give him the cue. As soon as he takes a step, I release. Give it to him again. There he goes away. He says, oh, that's not it. I didn't get the release, so I come back. He's thinking about going away. I keep the pressure there. He comes back towards me. I release. That's what you want. Right there, he thinks about taking it away. He says, nope, I remember that didn't work. He comes towards me. I release it. So right now he bounced back and forth. He got it wrong, he came back, release. He got it wrong, came back, release. The third time he went to it, he, he leaned that direction. His mind said, no, that doesn't work. Come back towards me. Third time's the charm. He got it right right away. We're going to ask again. Thinks about it. He says, what do I have to do? He 
says, Dad, I don't understand. That's fine. You have time to figure it out. The horse has to know that he has time to figure out. If I were to add pressure in that moment, he would start to panic because he feels like he doesn't have enough time to figure out where he needs to go. It's very important that you give him the time to figure it out. Good job, Leo. I'm going to see if I can get one more step, bring him a little bit tighter. He says, Dad, I can't go any more steps with my front end. That's why you got to do it with your rear end. Good job. Good for you. Perfect. So now I'm going to take him away from it. We're going to do it again. We're going to take him away. <clears throat> Bring him all the way back around, straight up to the mounting block just like we did before. Point to the spot that I want to move, more please, more please, more please, right there, one more, one more, right there, good, good for you. I'm still kind of right now giving him a release on every little bit that he goes. Eventually, the release will only come when he gets to here, but it's important in the beginning, he takes a few steps, release, you did it right. You take a few more steps, you get it right. You take a few more steps, you did it right. Release in between at each one. Good job, we're going to do it again. The mounting block's a little unstable. It's going to throw me off. I don't get bucked off too many horses, but this mounting block might buck me off today. Let's see what we got. Okay. Good for you. A little more. No, that's not it. There he gets the wrong answer. It stays the same. Release. Release. No, that's not it. There you go. Try again. Good. Try again. Right there. Good job. Good for you. Good for you. Let's do it again. Good job. Come away from the mounting block. Bring him back. <coughs> this time I'm going to make it even harder for him. We're going to go even more of an angle that he's away from the mounting block. So he has to come all the way around. Good for you. Good job, Leo. Good job, Leo. Good for you. Give them lots of love them when they get here. Pet them, scratch them, let them sit still for a while. You don't want to just jump off and shoot right away. You want them to be able to sit still when you mount on them. So make sure he has plenty of time that says when he gets here, he gets to relax, he gets to sit still. It's important that he knows we don't just walk off from the mounting block and we certainly don't walk off as soon as I get up there. All right. Good job, bud. Let's do it one more time with Mr. Leo. We're going to take him all the way around. Step up on my mounting block. Good. Still got to go a little farther. A little bit more. A little more. There you go. <clears throat> So this would be a great spot for me on the first day, first lesson, I would end here. He's got the basic concept, he's starting to gain a little confidence in getting to the mounting block. This would be somewhere where I would stop the first day. Now if I come out here and every time I ride I work on this for a second and get it better, soon, in a matter of a few sessions, He's going to start hitting this mounting block by the time you've gone up the steps. You're going to get there and look at him. He's already going to be coming right to you. And eventually that will turn into the point where we've seen some videos where you don't even have to touch the horse at all. You get up on that mounting block with nothing touching him. You point to him, kiss to him, whatever your cue is, they're going to bring their body over. Time, repetition, good help from different uh, things that take out options for him. And it becomes easier and easier and easier. All right, that'll be good for Mr. Leo. We're going to grab another horse and show you with a different one and see what they have to offer.